What happened on September the 11th, 2001 sent shockwaves around the world. Thousands of people lost their lives that day due to a horrific attack. The attack unified the country for a brief period of time, but it also understandably caused a great deal of panic and paranoia. But for some people, that paranoia turned into hatred. Hatred towards a group of people that looked a certain way, which would have horrific consequences for many innocent people. This is the case of the first hate crime victim of the post 9-11 backlash. Before I start, just a quick thank you to today's sponsor, NordVPN. Nord lets you find the best prices for things like YouTube Premium, Netflix and Amazon Prime. With Nord, you won't just have to pick one, you'll be able to get Amazon Prime for just £10 a year instead of 80 just by changing your location to India and YouTube Premium for only 130 a month by switching to Argentina. So basically, you'll be able to get 3 or 4 streaming services for the price you pay for just one. Just recently, I was trying to watch the England vs Italy finals in the World Cup and because I'm in Australia, it made it tricky. But thanks to Nord, I was able to watch it by changing my location to the UK. Something that I didn't even know you could do with a VPN. And of course, using a VPN will help you secure your data online, which these days is incredibly important. So if you hate protecting your data and saving money, then don't click the link. But if you do, click the link in the description to get a 2 year plan with 4 months free and a 30 day money back guarantee. So go ahead and click that link. And now, on to the video. Balbir Singh Sodhi was born in Punjab, India. He was the oldest of five brothers and was a member of the Sikh religion and thus had a beard and wore a turban. Balbir, along with one of his brothers, moved to the United States in 1987, eager to chase the American dream. His main reason for leaving India was to escape the religious persecution of Sikhs and of course America has the right to freedom of religion, so he was naturally drawn to the country. He was hoping to use his university training in mechanical engineering to make a living, but plans changed and he could only find work at a 7-Eleven for several years. And then he drove a taxi for 13 years in Los Angeles and San Francisco. After working incredibly hard and saving money, by the year 2000, he had saved enough to buy a house in Mesa, Arizona and purchased a gas station across the street. He would work 14 hour shifts almost every day. Balbir was doing very well for himself and was a much loved member of the community. And then on September the 11th, 2001, the horrendous attack occurred, claiming the lives of 2,996 people. And I'm sure we all know the details of what happened that day. After this tragic event occurred, some people began to blame all Muslims as a group for the attack, despite the majority disavowing what happened. But also, other religious groups came under fire due to the similarities in their appearances. Some people associated those who were of Middle Eastern or Indian or Pakistani heritage as an enemy, and especially those with a beard and turban. And because Balbir wore a beard and turban, even some regular customers began to act differently around him. When the events of 9-11 occurred, a man named Frank Rook was working when he heard the news. The people working with him stated that it affected him quite deeply. When he got home that afternoon, he watched the news coverage of the attacks and began to cry and ramble incoherently. On September the 12th, Frank didn't go to work and stayed home, which was quite rare for him. A colleague called him to make sure he was okay. On the phone, Frank told him that he wanted to go out and shoot some Middle Eastern people. On the morning of September 15th, Frank started his day by drinking. He consumed three large cans of beer and got into his truck and headed to a gas station in Mesa. During that afternoon, a landscaper was showing Balbir a damaged sprinkler just outside his gas station on 80th Street. Frank pulled up beside them, warmed down his window and opened fire from his truck. A total of 5 bullets hit Balbir. Frank then sped off. But he wasn't quite done yet. 
paramedics were called to the scene, but tragically, Balbea was pronounced dead. After shooting Balbea, Frank was not yet content with what he had done. He drove to a home that he had previously owned and sold to an Afghan couple. He pulled up outside the house, and from the inside of his truck, he fired three bullets through the house. The family were actually inside the home when the shots were fired, but thankfully, nobody was injured. Then, Frank sped away once again, and this time, he drove to another gas station owned by a man of Lebanese descent. Frank fired seven shots through the store window at a store clerk named Anwar Khalil. Thankfully, Anwar was very lucky. Not a single bullet hit him. Frank then sped off once again. He then made his way to a number of bars around the area. People who saw him say they witnessed him crying and rambling incoherently and ranted at the televisions reporting on the news in New York. The police were able to easily track down Frank. By the afternoon of September the 15th, the police made their way to Frank's house. Upon arrival, Frank put his hands in the air and complied with the officers. As they put him in the police car, he told the officers that he was a patriot and an American. When he got to the station, Frank began to shout at the officers and ask them, how can you arrest me and let them run wild? Frank then added, I wish that my punishment would be sending me to Afghanistan with lots of weapons. Frank's bail was set to $1 million. He was charged with first degree murder and attempted murder. His trial began on August 18th, 2003. His lawyers attempted to argue that he was not guilty on the grounds of diminished responsibility and pursued an insanity defense. They claimed he had a low IQ and heard relentless voices in his head telling him that Arabs must be killed. They also brought in evidence showing that his mother had twice been hospitalized for schizophrenia. Three psychiatrists and three sociologists testified at the trial regarding Frank's mental health. The jury found Frank guilty of all charges and sentenced him to death. In August of 2006, the Arizona Supreme Court revoked Frank's death sentence. The High Court unanimously agreed that Frank's mental health and low IQ were mitigating factors that should have resulted in a lesser sentence. But because of the serious nature of Frank's crimes, the court stated that he should be imprisoned for the rest of his natural life and never be released. Just days before his death, Balbir and the members of the Phoenix Sikh American community were trying to organize a press conference to condemn the attacks and to show their fellow Americans that they were not the enemy. They became concerned that people may become paranoid after the attack and lash out at anyone who looked like they were from Arab descent. Essentially, they were attempting to prevent exactly what happened to Balbir. In a horrific twist of irony, the very day that Balbir was killed, he had donated all the money he had in his wallet to a person at a local supermarket collecting money for the 9-11 Victims Fund. He even confided in his brother that he was thinking of going to New York to volunteer to help in the recovery, and he even wanted to donate his blood to the victims. And then, not even a year later, Balbir's younger brother Sakpal Singh Sodi was driving his taxi in San Francisco when he was tragically hit and killed by a stray bullet from a gang fight. What Frank did that day was of course not an act of patriotism like he believed, far from it. I feel like this case was an important one to share. It shows how ignorance can lead to horrific outcomes. Frank set out that day to kill people who looked a particular way, but had no idea what those people actually stood for. He based them on something so superficial. He claims that what happened on 9-11 sparked a mental breakdown, leading him to gun down a man who actually wanted nothing more than to help the people who were affected by the events. Frank now deeply regrets what he did 
and states that it wasn't of his own free will. There is also a video on YouTube where you can find a conversation between Frank and one of Balbir's brother 15 years after the attack took place. And sadly, there were hundreds of attacks on innocent people following the events of 9-11. This was just the start of it all. Balbir left behind five children and a wife, and he was 52 years old when he was shot down.